In this video, we're going to talk about a voltage multiplier circuit, a circuit in which you could extend as far as you want to to increase the voltage of the input. So we're going to use a 12 volt input. Now, each diode has a voltage drop. If you're using a silicon diode, the voltage drop is 0.6. And if you're using a germanium diode, the voltage drop is 0.3. But let's ignore the voltage drop of the diodes just to keep things simple. Now let's call this C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6. And then we have diodes D1, D2, D3, and so forth. So now let's talk about how this is going to work. So let's start with the negative half cycle of the sine wave. So during the negative half cycle, this side is going to be positive and this side is going to be negative. Current is going to flow from the positive side through D1. So D1 is on and then it's going to charge C1. Now C1 is going to be charged up to 12 volts. In actuality, it's going to be charged up to 11.7 volts because it's going to be 12 minus the voltage drop of, let's say, a germanium diode like 0.3. So it will be charged to 11.7 volts if you're using a germanium diode or 11.4 volts if you're using a silicon diode. But to keep things simple, we're going to say that C1 is now charged to 12 volts. Now, to understand the next part, we need to review batteries and how you can add their voltages. So let's say you connect two batteries like this, where the negative terminal of one battery is attached to the positive terminal of the other battery. In this case, the voltages are additive. So let's say if this is 10 volts and the other battery is 30 volts, the sum total will be 40. Whereas if you connect the battery like this, where the two negative terminals are facing each other, or if the two positive terminals are facing each other, the voltages subtract. So the top one is 40, the bottom one is still 10. The voltage across it will be, I take that back. Let's say the top one is not 40, but 30. The bottom one is still 10, but across it, the voltage will be 20. So it will be the difference between the two. Now, during the positive half cycle of the sine wave, the polarity across this AC signal will reverse. This time, this is going to be positive, and the other side will be negative. So notice that the AC signal and C1, their voltages add. We have a positive side attached to the negative side of the capacitor. So thus, between these two points, we have a potential of 24 volts now. So let's assign this 0 volts where that's the ground. So right now, the potential here with respect to ground is 12, and at this point is 24. So current is going to flow from the positive terminal of the power source and from the positive terminal of C1 through D2. So D2 is on. It can't flow through D1 because it's in reverse bias mode. D1 is off. It's going to flow through D2 and then through C2. So during the positive cycle, C2 is being charged, and it's going to charge up to a maximum of 24 volts without taking the voltage drop of the diode into account. So we're going to put 24 volts across C2. So that's the potential across it at this point. So now what's going to happen next? Well, we know the current is going to reverse. So let's change the polarity of the power source. So this is going to be positive, and this is going to be negative. So now notice that the input, the power source, and C2, those voltages will add, because here we have the positive side of the power source and the negative side of C2 close to each other. 
So between these two points, let's call this A and B, the potential is 36. So current is going to flow in this direction, emanating from C2 as well. And then it's going to flow through D3. So D3 is on. And then it's going to go this way. Now, we need to talk about this. So we said the potential between point A and point B is 36 volts. And current is flowing this way. That means C3 is going to be charged. Now, when current flows from negative to positive, the voltage rises. When it flows from positive to negative, the voltage drops. So let's say A is at a potential of zero. Let's just, actually, let's say negative 12, because this is at zero. So going from A to ground, the potential increases from negative 12 to zero, because we're going from negative to positive. And then going from zero to point B, it increases by 24 volts. Now, from this point, past through C3, we're going from positive to negative, so the voltage is going to drop. And also, from across C1, is going from positive to negative, so the voltage drops as well. C3 is going to be charged up to 24 volts. Notice the difference between A and B. It's 36 volts. So it will charge C1 and C3 to a sum of 36. 12 plus 24 is 36. So C3 will now be charged to 24 volts. So let's see what's going to happen when the current changes direction again. So let's change the polarity of our input signal. And so current is going to flow in this direction through C1 and through C3. So now we have 12 plus 12 plus 24 volts. So we have a total of 48 volts of charging power. So that current is going to flow through D4. So D4 is on. And then the energy from the input source and C1 and C3 will now be used to charge up C2 and C4. So here we have a total of 48 volts. C4 and C2 will now be charged to a total of 48 volts. C2 is already at 24. That means that C4 will be charged to 24 as well, because 24 plus 24 is 48. So let's call this potential, or let's say point B, and let's call this point C. So with respect to ground, point B is now at 24 volts. Point C is at 48 volts. So we can see how this voltage multiplier circuit is working. What do you think the potential will be at point D? Would you say 72 or 96? Well, let's find out. But first, let's put the polarity signs across C4, since it's now charged. And let's reverse the direction of the current. And so we need to change the polarity across our input source. So now current is flowing in this direction through C2 and through C4. So these voltages are now additive. We have 12 plus 24 plus 24. So we have 60 volts of charge and power. So after the current flows through C4, or from C4, it's going to go through D5. And then it's going to flow through C5, C3, and C1. So those three capacitors, C1, C3, and C5, are now being charged by the 12 volt power source, C2, and C4. So they're being charged by 60 volts, which means they will be charged to 60 volts. 12 plus 24 plus 24 is 60. So that means that C5 will be charged to 60 volts. I mean, not 60 volts, but 24 volts. So that the sum of these is 60. 
So now let's put a negative sign here and a positive sign here. And now the current is going to reverse. So current is going to flow in this direction through C1, from C3, and from C5. So now we have a total of 12 plus 12 plus 24 plus 24, or 72 volts of charge and power. So current will flow from C5 through diode 6, and then C6, C4, and C2 will now be charged to a total of 72 volts. 24 plus 24 plus 24 is 72, which means C6 will be charged to 24. So thus the potential at point D is 24 plus 24 plus 24, or 72 volts with respect to ground. So if we were to extend it, we can see that the voltage is increasing by 24, which is twice the input voltage. So at point B, the voltage is twice the value of the input voltage. At point C, it's going to be four times the value of the input voltage. At point D, it will be six times the value of the input voltage. And if we were to continue this circuit to, let's say, point E, then it's going to be eight times the input voltage, or 96 volts. So that's the basic idea behind this particular voltage multiply circuit. You're charging up capacitors and adding their voltages together to increase the output voltage. But understand this though, as you increase the output voltage, the output current decreases. Because this circuit doesn't yield a power gain. It simply converts current into voltage. There's no increase in energy here.